Hey everyone, this is Ross Ratty and welcome to another episode of Fruit Talk. This is the podcast style video that I do for you guys every Wednesday night at 9 o'clock Eastern. We talk a lot about fruits and a lot about vegetables and really my journey of starting an orchard. Um, we go in depth with different fruits, different vegetables, and uh, really just whatever I'm thinking of at the moment that's of interest to me. Um, whatever I'm passionate about currently and right now, I'm pretty passionate about planning, um, getting my garden plans all together for the upcoming season. I think that's really important for success for anybody. Um, you know, whether it's an orchard, whether it's a garden, having the right plan. And we talk about this every year. I think now this is actually the second year now that we're talking about our plan because one of our earlier episodes of Fruit Talk was about my plans for the upcoming 2019 season now we're going to be in 2020 and uh i think it's just a topic that we should talk about every year um definitely is so important to plan so what i'd recommend for you guys is create yourself a spreadsheet or you know draw out a map um, you can do this in um, different forms you can have a paint file that you can create you can also do this in uh, Google I think Google has like a, a Google draw um, thing that you can set up I do this in a, an Excel spreadsheet and I really label everything out depending on the square footage that I'm that I'm using and I find that really helps especially during planting time I'm not running around to figure out where everything's gonna go um, getting everything done in the spring is a lot of work and it takes a lot of time if you do all this preparation now um, before the spring it really makes the spring a lot easier and a lot quicker um, and it's not as stressful um, you can grow a lot more food that way so for me I'm actually sort of running out of bed space uh, we eliminated two beds this year uh, that we had last year and I decided to do that for different reasons. One, one of the beds we created wasn't really in the best spots. And no matter what I plant there, probably would never do well. And in fact, when we created the bed, I think I created it incorrectly. I think I put down, what I had done is I put down cardboard. And then on top of that, I put down rice holes. And then I put down soil. And I think the rice holes really messed up the soil composition uh, in a way. I really don't like rice holes. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, within the soil, I don't think it's really that great. As a layer, you know, as like a two-inch layer of, of material, I think it's actually pretty bad. And it was really, I think, cooling the soil down in a way. Um, whatever was growing in that rice hole bed didn't grow well it was very strange i'll never do it again um i think it's a great mulch but even as a mulch it really cools the soil down super fast and um that's not really what we want i think we want the soil to be warmer in a lot of situations especially earlier in the spring as we go along throughout the season you could in fact put some mulch down cool things down I think that definitely helps in a wide variety of climates um, so we're, we're down two beds um, I think what I want to do is figure out some way to get a third bed in here somehow some way um, because there's a lot more food that I would like to grow than what I have listed here and it's kind of a sort of a mess um, at least in terms of what I have, what I'll, what I'm going to have available. I'm not really too impressed with it. Um, I'm kind of really this year eliminating the, the stuff that doesn't do well, or I don't really eat a lot of, like, I don't really eat a lot of squash. I don't really eat a lot of, um, you know, zucchini, um, you know, I don't eat a lot of cucumbers. A lot of things actually in that family of plants, they kind of attract certain pests, especially the cucumber beetle. Um, and then the cucumber beetle attacks my melon plants, which I really love. And I really want those things to do well. Um, so I'm not growing cucumbers, at least anywhere close to my melon plants ever again. Um, 
I'm probably not going to grow uh, squash, at least in the foreseeable future, until I get some more more land and more growing area. Um, I don't eat a lot of squash, you know. Um, it's not something that I usually I usually consume. I don't know what it. I don't know why. I like certain squash, like a, a kabocha squash is really good. I do like a butternut squash. Um, I'm a less lesser fan of uh, spaghetti squash. We've talked a lot about these different vegetables in prior episodes. Um, in fact, I think we did a whole episode just on squash. Um, I've re also realized I can just get those things. Um, zucchini squash even really eggplant pretty easily from the store at a pretty good quality um yes it is going to be better if you grow it yourself you pick it at the right time but for the most part i'm not really too uh gung-ho on things like peppers and eggplants and squash um, pumpkins, um, cucumbers. I, I do like cucumbers and I wish I could grow more cucumbers and I could grow them easier. They're very difficult to grow here. And that's really the big, the big d deciding factor with the cucumber. Cause I would like to grow enough cucumbers to make a lot of pickles with, and then have those pickles throughout the year. But they just don't do well with the cucumber beetle here and the amount of humidity and fusarium wilt that they end up getting you really need to be gr doing some grafting and that's just not something i've experimented with i think i should do that this year um and do the the grafting of the melon plants and put them onto some kind of squash rootstock um, and that would really help with Fusarium wilt. That would really help overall, for sure, um, with just getting more vigorous, healthy plants that are off to a much better start of the season. Um, so I think overall, I'm, I'm pretty limited in what I'm deciding here. I think I may even change this, and I may even decide not to grow eggplants. I may not even grow peppers. Um, I do like hot peppers but i really am a big fan of some of the hot sauces that people are creating um that you can get i don't know if you guys have seen like hot ones on youtube but there's a lot of interesting hot sauces that have come into the market and uh i'm sure i can make a nice hot sauce but it probably wouldn't be nearly as good as some of these other hot sauces and um it just doesn't seem worth the effort you know i gotta pick my battles there's other things I'm focusing on. Um, one day I'll make my own hot sauce. Something that could be interesting is making my own um, salsa. And some people swear by their own salsa and think it's the best thing ever. Um, I haven't had a good salsa that I was like, well, I have to do. I have to grow all these peppers to make the salsa. You know, um, I haven't seen it. I haven't haven't experienced it. So until that happens, I may even not grow peppers um what i would like to do is grow enough peppers to preserve them in vinegar um, i really am a big fan of <clears throat> preserved peppers that's pretty much it you put them in vinegar in a vinegar slash olive olive oil solution um you you actually roast them first you take off the skin if you want uh, you don't have to and then you just preserve them and they last for a long time and they go really well on a lot of stuff they taste so good um, it's a good way to preserve them and eat them I think it's a better way I don't really cook all that often with peppers in my food either so most of the peppers I grow or gonna I'm gonna grow is gonna be exclusively for that I think that's actually what I probably should do here is maybe even not grow eggplant. I do eat eggplant though. I, I, I eat quite a bit of eggplant and I like to make uh, eggplant parm. Um, I make a pretty good eggplant parm, but I don't know personally how many times I'm going to eat that. And yeah, I don't know. Well, I th I think we may want to do more peppers because of that thought. 
so I may have to take something out. Um, what I really love is basil. Can't get enough basil. Um, well, that's not true. But uh, I think a few basil plants is enough to supply me pretty much all the time. I'm, I'm good with pesto. I think pesto is really good. And I have a pretty good recipe. And I have so much pesto in my freezer that I don't know what to do with it. But... Um, yeah, it's just uh, it's not something that <laughs> that I want to um, focus on this year. Um, so I do need basil, though. Basil is like a must for so many different things, especially the tomato sauce that I'm going to be making again this year. The sauce is a must. Got to have my own tomato sauce every year. The orange banana tomato makes an incredible sauce. It's a wonderful tomato. It does well here. It's super productive. Uh, it makes an incredible sauce. It's just plain and simple. So we're growing six of those plants this year in addition to a black cherry tomato. That's the only cherry tomato I'm going to grow. Reason being, it's the closest cherry tomato I've ever tasted to like a beefsteak. Uh, it is the best. I know uh, people obviously could disagree, but I just can't believe somebody who's eaten a black cherry wouldn't think that was the best cherry tomato they've they've ever eaten it's really like it's like the black madeira of cherries cherry tomatoes um i'm sure there's something better out there but i'm not really willing to find out anymore you know um enough experimenting with certain things i've found something that does really well in, in black cherry the orange banana does really well pink brandywine is the one that also does really well it's productive it's the best tasting tomato I've ever had fresh. Um, I'm sure there's better tomatoes out there, but I'm not really willing again to dedicate all this time growing all these different varieties, kill myself with all this different things. You know, it's not worth it to me. Um, I'd rather do that with other things like the figs and the persimmons, the pomegranates. Um, some of these melons we're not going to give up on, you know, uh, I did get to fruit some of these melons this year and I was pretty disappointed overall with the large majority of them. Um, but I've realized, I think there's a couple of them that probably will not really ever get that sweet, that incredible. Um, maybe I didn't pick them right, which I don't find to be the case. I didn't find to be the case. Maybe I didn't do something right. Um, but I do think that there's probably some varieties of these melons that are just far superior in terms of flavor than the others. And I think that's what I'm going to go with this year is the tastiest of the tastiest varieties and just stick with that. And if I don't get that great a production out of some of them, then that's what I'll eliminate. And I'll, I'll keep the ones that are productive but also incredibly flavorful. You know, that's the key. That's the goal. Um, I don't know what that melon is yet, and it's unfortunate because we had such a wide variety of melons last year, but mostly all of them didn't do well because of that Fusarium wilt and the cucumber beetle. Um, I do like the sugar cane. We're going to keep that. We planted that in the beds as a perennial. So that be that'll be like the one perennial vegetable I stick with. Um, everything in the south facing bed even though it's one bed now is in a raised bed um, we we basically took our four inches of soil that we had originally as a raised bed and we doubled that to eight uh, reason being it's a huge difference between no raised bed four inches six inches eight inches 12 inches whatever it is there's a it's a crazy amount of heat like if you were to grow a pepper plant in a pot, it's like a huge difference between growing one here in the ground. Um, it's almost not worth growing certain things like eggplants and peppers. Um, those are probably the two biggest ones. If you don't have them in a, uh, a pot or above ground, it's almost just not worth growing them. I, I don't really recommend it. Um, because the production you get out of those plants is just not a lot. And the only <clears throat> the only way you really succeed there is if you have a lot of land and a lot of plants. 
So for me, it's not something I really want to grow unless I have the right conditions for it. Um, now, I would like to have another bed somewhere in here. I would like to create a third bed because we really only have two or maybe you could say three. Um, you know, we do have the garlic and the yacone. I'm hoping to get some yacone crowns this year. Finally, they're so hard to find. Um, so hopefully we can get some yacone going and also the garlic and the shallots. They've already been planted out, which really leaves us only two beds to work with. And then there's the sugar cane, which is there. It's, you know, it's staying there. It's not going anywhere. Um, we also have, let's say, a ton of snap peas that I want to grow. This is like the big spring crop that I really love the most. And you can only really get them once a year for a very short time. Um, so for me, growing peas is really key and important. And... I want to have a lot of them, so I need to dedicate a lot of space to the peas, the sugar snap peas, that is, by the way, guys. Um, sugar Ann is such a wonderful variety. It fruits early. It's heavy. It's a heavy fruiter. It does well this year. It did really well when I started it indoors. That was a big, big plus on some of those um, some of those plants. Um, however, some of them did really well just planting them out, um, direct seeding them, but I didn't get the production I wanted in time. Um, they would have outproduced the plants that I had started indoors um, eventually, but uh, I needed to rip those, those snap peas out um, to put in the tomatoes and the melons and all that. So I didn't have room last year. To get as many of them as I would have liked, uh, I think. Um, the sugar snap peas are so good that I, I have to grow them every year. The same thing with string beans. I think the string beans are, are super, super good. Uh, and soybeans to make edamame. And we've done videos on edamame. We've done videos on the sugar snap peas. I haven't talked too much about string beans before. But French beans is another way of, I guess, a classification for them. Um, I grow the what variety of uh, of bean do I grow of the French beans? Um, whatever it is, it's really really good. Uh, let me see if I can find it on Baker Creek's website here. Um, it might be blue, it's not Blue Lake, I don't think. Um, but we're gonna look for it. Um, so that that kind of covers that heat loving bed. I would like to get. Particularly, if I could, every single thing into the heat-loving bed or in that area. Um, well, not not everything, I think, actually. But uh, definitely things like Brussels sprouts and broccoli and fennel. While these, these crops really like the cooler temperatures, they really benefit greatly from... A warmer location in the spring um, getting that spring crop off of these vegetables is is quite difficult if you don't have the right location and you don't start them indoors where I live anyway so I personally would like to grow broccoli and Brussels sprouts and fennel fennel actually is a little easier because it can withstand the heat um, I, I you know what I would like to have a perennial fennel location um, at some point here. I have a bunch of bronze fennel that I've perennialized. Um, two locations I have in the yard with the bronze fennel, but one of them may not come back. And then the, the bronze fennel is not, the bulbs are not really that big. They're not really that edible. So it's kind of an issue. Um, you really want, I think, at least for appearances, you definitely want the bronze fennel. But when it comes to food and eating, um, I think it definitely helps to have um, the the real fennel that bulbs up. And you can use it for many different things, right? You can use the leaves more often. Uh, they're easier to eat, I think. Um, the seeds are about the same. I really love fennel seed. 
I've saved seed this year. Um, that's how much I really like fennel seed. Um, but the bulbs are really interesting and they're kind of like an onion in my opinion. And I really think they're underrated. Um, I don't really like growing onions I've learned this year. I'd rather grow garlic, um, especially because the onions are, are difficult to store. For me, I don't really have the best storage area for potatoes and onions. Garlic's nice because you can store it in the fridge and you don't really have to worry about it. Um, oh, here's the, the bean that I grow. It's called the Kalima bean. And it just really is super tender. You can eat it fresh. You don't even have to cook this damn thing. It's really an incredible bean. It's incredible. Um, yeah, fine for fresh use, it says. It really is. It's nuts how good this bean is. I don't know if there's other beans that are better than this, but I would be hard-pressed to think that there's a better bean. Um... I'm sure there is, but again, I, I'm just so impressed with this. Look at this, 40, 79 reviews, 4.9. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, it's an incredible bean. So you, I think that's a must grow. And what's nice about the, the string beans and the, the, sugar pe the sugar snap peas, you put the sugar snap peas in the ground, you know, sometime around early, um, like mid-March or early April, and then they grow and then they fruit and then they do well and then they the heat gets too much for them and then they die off then you can immediately plant your string beans and you'll get a crop of string beans very quickly because the soil finally warmed up and that's like a, ne a necessary thing for the for the string beans and then they start doing really really well and you get pretty much a crop of each in pretty high number, really high productivity. Um, it's a lot of food. You don't even need a lot, a large space for them. I think honestly, even like a four foot by three foot space may even be too much. So I may even do less, maybe three by three and call it a day. But ideally, I've done I've done like a five foot by three foot area in the past, and that was a lot of food. Um, and it's just a nice little snack. You're working outside; you can always find snap peas, string beans, and you go over there, you pick it, you eat it fresh, no cooking required. It's so sweet; they're so good. It's a must grow. It really is. Um, you know, in terms of the the melon varieties that I want to grow, I really don't know what that is just yet. I have to do some research and figure out which of these melons. I'm only really dedicating a small area. We're going to have a trellis here because what I've done is I've pretty much planted figs everywhere. <laughs> everywhere I've, I could, I put a fig tree in the ground. And that eliminated a whole bed, but I did save some area there for melons. And we'll have a trellis that I'm going to set up to have some of them climb up the trellis and uh that'll be that for some of them you know it's like the best i can do unfortunately but i probably can get about three varieties in there and that's what i'll i'll stick with um i don't even want to plant melons where i had them last year or, or i should say this this past year um the reason for that is that they're going to cool down the soil for the figs. They're they're in a it was a really good location for the melons to be growing, and they did well there. Um, but I, I just really don't like like I want the figs to be in full production mode this year, and anything that's cooling the soil down is going to stop that from happening. So um, I don't think I'm going to do that this year. Um, so we're going to have a lot, a lot less of everything really is, is really what it comes down to in terms of the, the cool loving bed. This is not a raised bed. However, we did pile up some soil. Um, when you put down any bed, I recommend put, putting down, um, well, put down cardboard first, then put down the, the compost, at least four inches of compost. I think that really, really helps you get pretty much guaranteed if the compost is well aged and it's really well broken down 
it's high quality compost, you're pretty much guaranteeing yourself a successful vegetable bed, um, no matter what you do. So throw that on top of your soil. Um, so you, you could say it's not a raised bed, but it's sort of, I guess is, um, to some degree, it's probably only two inches tall nowadays though. I really need to add more soil to this particular bed, but right now we actually have the cold frame there and we're growing arugula and we have some bok choy. And the nice thing about this bed is that I can grow in this bed all year round as well. Um, but it has a nice benefit of warming up very early in the spring and also staying warm late in the fall. And then in the summer, it's quite cool. So it's really the perfect bed for a lot of crops. We're talking things like lettuces, particularly arugula. I'm not gonna grow any spinach this year. No Swiss chard. Arugula is king. I'm sorry, a rocket, arugula, whatever you wanna call it, it is the best lettuce out of any lettuce I've ever tasted, I've ever grown. It is so tender. It has the right level of, um, what is that word that I'm looking for here? It just has the perfect flavor for a lettuce and it's it's got a nice texture to it. It's got nice shape. Um, it's beautiful. It, it really does have the whole package. You put that lettuce with some quinoa, cook yourself up some quinoa, put in some roasted, or sauteed onions. You can throw in some sauteed mushrooms, throw in a little bit of, uh, of lemon in there, you know, get yourself maybe even some, some seeds or nuts of some kind. Uh, and you've got yourself an incredible salad. You know, you don't even need vinegar. Just throw in some olive oil with, from the, the sauteed vegetables, put in some, uh, some garlic if you want. Um, you're just you're gonna be in heaven you can throw in some bacon uh the, it, i was eating a salad every day um from about you know sometime in april all the way through june and i i could if i really want probably keep that up all summer um the arugula eventually disappeared and i had to replant it um, but I, I was just so busy that I couldn't keep up with it. Um, I could imagine I could just keep replanting some arugula and always have myself some arugula. I find carrots and radishes are probably my favorite root crops to grow. I really was impressed by the French breakfast radish. That is an incredible radish. It reminds me a lot of like a Hakurai turnip. We talk a lot about that. And I like the Hakurai turnips, uh, but the radish I think beats that. And for me, um, the, the French breakfast radish is so good and easy to grow. It doesn't make sense, I think, to grow the turnips as well. You know, I don't process them, unfortunately. It would be nice to get myself like enough radishes, enough turnips and pickle them. And then I can have that all year. And that would be, I think, the most ideal scenario. You know, um, I just don't have the energy, unfortunately, um, to be processing too many foods. Um, you know, I really would like to have more food or at least someone, uh, someone in my life that would be able to process a lot of these foods for me and help me out with this. Um, but it's just a, it's not something that everybody knows how to do. And it's, um, you know, everybody can learn, but, um, you know, there's a certain type of person that really enjoys it and, and, and likes this kind of thing. I enjoy it myself, but it's a, it's more enjoyable when you have somebody else to share this kind of stuff with, and also really likes to do it. And then you, you feel kind of driven to do that thing whatever it is you know if you could also be you know if you have friends that are really into working out you're gonna have you're gonna be working out more you know um not always the case but if you have enough people in your life that do a particular thing you're gonna kind of start sort of leaning that way you know um 
so I don't really have as much time, unfortunately, and um, desire at this current moment to be doing this to all this processing, but uh, that would be a big goal of mine in the future. Um, so these two, the, the radish and the, and the mochum carrot, I do like the mochum carrot. I have a lot of seed. I would like to try a different carrot. I'm, I'm not going to lie. There's a, there is a carrot that interests me. I can't remember what it's called, but I think Baker Creek sells it. It's like the, one of those purple carrots that they, they sell. Um, from uh, Japan or something, um, they go crazy for this thing. Advertising it. Um, by the way, I don't know about you guys. I think it's the Kyoto Red Carrot. That's it. This is the one. I think they really, really advertise this thing. It doesn't have the great reviews, but silky red carrots are grown near Kyoto. Um, carved in the shape of a plum blossom to represent fertility. These carrots have an exceptional texture and sweet flavor. That right there is enough to make somebody want to grow something. Um, the texture I've had on some carrots can be really phenomenal and that makes it for me. You're not going to find a carrot too much in the flavor department that's so different and so out of this world that you're like, oh, this carrot the flavor of it's so amazing, you know. Even mochum, which is supposed to be the sweetest carrot that exists, um, the texture for me is where it's at with with the carrot. Um, so I'm interested to try this. I'm surprised it has so many bad reviews. Um, I guess this person here said that they they bolted. The flavor is sweet does exceptionally well uh, last year this was their favorite this year they all bolted so interesting um, so this is meant to be a fall carrot that you plant in the winter because um, I guess they bolt easily that's interesting and it says traditionally eaten on the Japanese New Year when is the Japanese New Year January 1st so yeah I guess that's what they're supposed to be do, doing is that they're it's a winter carrot so I'm interested maybe I should grow these but in the winter time you know I can always change it up also you know a, a three square foot area for just carrots is not really all that much but I don't find myself eating too many carrots you know I'll probably eat you know it really it's hard to say how many carrots I'm going to eat too. You know, it's kind of hard to predict all this and it's just something that you kind of have to like, you know, get some experience with for those of you guys who haven't grown that much food, you kind of just have to say to yourself, well, how much do I think I'm really going to eat of this particular thing? But also I don't really know how much food I'm going to even get. Right. I mean, I think that's a lot of, that's a big question. A lot of people have, so that only comes really with experience, but I would say in a three square foot area of carrots, that's a lot of food. If you plant them in densely, uh, you can even plant them all year. You can continuously keep seeding them in there. Um, you know, just enough so every so often you get your carrot fix, you know. Um, it's nice to eat a carrot like every day, you know, come out here get yourself some string beans or, or snap peas, pull up a carrot, pull up a French breakfast radish, eat all that stuff nice and fresh right off the, right out of the ground or right off the plant. Eat some cherry tomatoes. You know, those are really nice garden snacks, I find. Um, even arugula can be eaten raw. I think it's so good that you can even just cut some, take some arugula off and it's really tasty. Um, what are some other really good garden snacks? I wonder, I think that may change my opinion on a couple things here, but I don't know about you guys, but I got the, the Baker Creek catalog um, in the mail the other day and I got three of them in the mail. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, I would recommend Baker Creek. There's a lot of seed companies out there. 
I do find that Baker Creek does a pretty good job at finding these interesting varieties, and I think that's where they shine the most. Um, they're probably not going to give you the most seeds, and they're not going to have the cheapest prices, but uh, they do have varieties, I think, that are above and beyond some other um, plants, some other varieties that you'll find at other companies. Um, there is some standards, and you don't want to get too crazy, I think. Per this is my personal stance on Baker Creek, is that they have all these weird, interesting varieties. I think you need to have a nice balance of both. The standard, really classic varieties that people have been proven, to, it's been proven to do well everywhere or in a particular climate at a particular time of the year. Then you got yourself some experimental stuff like you know some of these things you see on Baker Creek and you, you never know, like some of them may turn out to be the best thing, you know, and you may just go with that forever from this point. Um, you know, like this Kalima bean, that is probably not sold by anybody else, that string bean. But I took a chance with that one, and that one turned out to be really incredible. I would like to grow some other different varieties and see for myself, but I'm really really happy with, uh, with that particular variety. Um, so, you know... That's mostly it, guys. My friend Chris has uh, some mustard that he grows. It's a type of mustard. I can't, I can't remember what it's called. I'll have to find out from him. But it's supposed to be really, really tasty. Actually, I've tasted it. Um, it's supposed to do really well as well. It just grows super well, super easy to grow. It doesn't bolt. Um, it's got a great flavor to it. So I think it could eventually – it could replace arugula maybe at some point. And that's kind of how I would use it as like a an arugula substitute, you know. Um, like it's got that mustardy flavor, sort of that arugula has, you know. It, it's kind of got that that bite to it, but not an overwhelming bite, you know. I think arugula, when it gets to a certain size, it gets pretty pretty intense. But if you get this stuff when it's young and tender, oh my god, arugula is so so good baby arugula is extremely hard to beat um there is a couple crops that i am considering and i would like to grow them somewhere because i'll tell you this um i really do enjoy a lot of brassicas you know i think that well first off i think arugula is a brassica i think the mustard is a brassica as well um i I'm mean, just in love with Brussels sprouts as a food. It's probably one of my favorite vegetables. Broccoli is also one of my favorites. The only issue is that it's almost like it's not worth growing because you don't get a whole lot of broccoli and you need a lot of room for these plants. Um, it almost really doesn't seem worth it. I'm, I'm, I might consider not even growing broccoli. Plus, the, you know, the difference between store-bought broccoli and the broccoli you grow at home is not really that big. It would be nice to have a lot of Brussels sprouts so that you can really have, like, an, a crazy amount of them. Um, that would be, like, one, you know, you get enough Brussels sprouts, you won't have to buy them. You know what I mean? Um, it will give me a good excuse to keep eating them. Um, so maybe I'll grow less broccoli. Uh, but there is something like bok choy that I find really good, uh, particularly the joy choy, which you grow during the summer. Um, there's a couple others that I really liked, uh, a couple of other Asian brassicas that ended up turning out to be pretty good. Um, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, what were some of the other ones? Um, it's a shame I don't have my list from last year. Uh, I'm blanking on the names here, guys, but there was a couple of them last year, and we talked about a crazy amount of these that we went through when we went to a, a specialty. I think it's called Kitazawa Seed Company, and they mostly specialize in Asian vegetables, Asian varieties, and they have a really nice selection, and I picked up a bunch of different things, and some of it actually did really well. I was shocked. Um, I do also like, oh, this may be something I want to grow, 
is the happy rich variety of it's like a rapini or a, bro a broccoli rob i really did like that those those cook super well um and they come out and they do produce a lot of shoots and i finally really figured it out with that particular plant um that thing's incredible i really do uh, appreciate happy rich And I kind of see like, you know, there's a bunch of different things that you could cook with throughout the year. You know, you kind of got like a asparagus in the beginning where I kind of put all these things in the same category in a way, you know, things like asparagus and the, the garlic scapes and the, um, the broccoli rob, the rapini, um, Maybe there's one other thing I'm blanking on, but there's at least those three things. I kind of see them in a similar way in a culinary sense. You know, um, they have different tastes, obviously different flavors, but uh, you, you kind of can cook them in the same way and use them just at different times of the year for the same purpose. Like uh, in a stir fry, you can have yourself some arugula or I'm, I'm sorry, some asparagus, or you can throw in garlic scapes, or you can throw in the the rapini i think it really does cook similarly at least i cook them similar similarly and i use them for similar things um i know that doesn't make too much sense but i guess in a stir fry sense it's just like a nice substitute um and i i like that style of food that like it's kind of like eating a long stemmed thing whatever it is you know what i mean um So you're kind of eating, at least with rapini or broccoli rabe, you're pretty much eating like the stem, right? The stem of the broccoli. With with asparagus, you're eating the stem of the asparagus. You know, with the scape, you're eating the stem of the flower. Um, they taste very differently, right? The scape could be used for very different purposes than the other two, but um, at least I, I like them in that in that sense. And I guess the garlic, the one point about the garlic, I'm not growing any soft necks this year because the scapes are so good that, and I am able to grow hard necks to then get the scapes. I don't see any purpose to grow soft necks and it doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. We're missing out on such an incredible food in the scape that it's really like, it's really a shame to not grow, um, to not grow these, the scapes. Um, now there is one big crop that I, I, I kind of want to make room for. I wish I had a lot of land for, and I wish I could store them well, um, so that I could have these all year, which is basically the, the potato. Um, these potatoes I grew this year the German butterball potato is so out of this world good um, that it's crazy it's absolutely crazy if you cook it right um, they're they're insane uh, we did a whole video just on the German butterball I got a pretty decent harvest I think I didn't make out really all that well compared to what I put in but uh, I did get a lot of potatoes. I did eat a lot of great tasting potatoes this year. And uh, I wish I had more space for them. I need, though, this is the other issue. I need an area to grow them in that's in more sun. Uh, that's also in a raised bed. Um, so, you know, you I could, as an example, get rid of all of this and just grow potatoes in here. And I probably would be happy, but uh, you know I'm sacrificing all this other stuff, and uh, I don't have enough. I don't have enough room. Um, I do have two raised beds. This is a raised bed here that we just put in. That's about two foot by three foot, and I have another raised bed right here. That's another two foot by three foot. Um, and it's it's they're both about a foot high off the ground. Those would make perfect beds for potatoes or other vegetables that love that heat. But 
I want to grow figs in these race beds. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting greedy and I should just uh, chill with the figs and, and commit to a number of these vegetables and uh, I'll be probably a lot happier that way. Otherwise, I'm going to have to make another bed. I really do think I should. And these amount of brassicas, just, it's just not enough food. It really isn't. Like, this is how many square feet is this 18 square feet no this is uh not 18 square feet this is six square feet for broccoli that gets me about six plants six broccoli plants six broccoli heads which is really next to nothing it is the most incredible broccoli you've ever had um it's so good really but it's just not enough food. It's just really not enough broccoli. Um, yeah, I don't know. What should I do, guys? I think I should just maybe just say, screw it, make myself new beds. Just get myself two new beds. I could grow all the potatoes I wanted. I could grow all the brassicas I wanted. Um, and call it a day, right? I don't know. I guess if I have enough Brussels sprouts, you won't really need broccoli. I think the Brussels sprouts do a nice job of producing for a pretty long time and giving me a lot of food. Um, so I think I'm probably, I could get away with it, but man, I'm sure everybody's like, I wish I had more land, but uh, I wish some people are like, I wish I had land at all <laughs> um and there's so much more i would like to grow too you know um i'm kind of really throwing some things to the side here you know i really would like to really commit to artichokes in a perennial form with the right variety that could survive here um even some amaranth i think is pretty good underneath as a as a cucumber beetle um a tractor it's really good as actually a companion plant if you have cucumber beetles and plant yourself some amaranth the cucumber beetle goes after the amaranth and ignores everything else it's actually really incredible i saw it for myself this year um let's see there's different types of beans i'd like to grow like i like to have beans enough beans so that i could dry them and have them throughout the winter time um, or even all year have enough beans to cook with my own beans and not only do that but have better tasting beans that way who wants canned beans right like uh, I really do I don't know if you guys have experienced a bean where you have to you have to heat it up for a whole hour really you know it's not like quick rice or anything like that or, or canned beans or, or quick grains you know some of these beans if you get them or even some rice some grains if you get the the quality stuff you can get yourself you know this product that actually will take you like a whole hour for for you to warm it up and i'm telling you they're like the best beans the best grains you've ever eaten in your life um, I like to grow beets and experiment more with them in the kitchen. Um, I didn't really get a chance to do that this year, unfortunately. I kind of kind of uh, put the beets aside and never got around to it. Um, I'd also like to do pickled beets at some point. Um, bok choy is really quite incredible, and that's something we're going to do is that this – bed here this cool oven crop bed changes when the summer comes some of this has to come out some of it can't grow during the summer and then you do a crop during the summer and then you can even do a third crop in the for the fall uh, if you're really on it you can do that so bok choy is something you grow in the summer which is very strange you wouldn't you wouldn't think so right uh, but if it's too cold it actually bolts very strange um 
I would like to grow some cabbage too. I mean, wouldn't it be cool to get your own Napa cabbage and make yourself your your own kimchi out of that? It's very difficult to do. Asian cabbages. Um, everything loves attacking these things, and a lot of these vegetables I've even mentioned and, and are going to grow. They really need protection all summer. If you don't give them some kind of cloth to keep out all the bugs you're going to have a lot of pest issues on these on these different things even cauliflower i'd like to grow i think celery would be cool i have never grown celery corn i can't figure it out but i definitely need more room more space a better bed a warmer soil uh that would be a big one one day. I would love to get that to work. I still haven't been able to get it to work, and I'm I'm pretty much given up because I don't have enough land. I don't have enough space for it. And it's a shame because the corn you grow yourself is so – it's so good. Cucumbers, again, for my own pickles all year. Eggplants, two different types. You got some for stir fries. You got some for like an eggplant parm that soaks up a lot of olive oil, soaks up a lot of flavor. Um, I think endive would be pretty cool as like a, something in a, you know, like a salad mix. Fennel is fantastic. We talked about fennel. I mean, maybe some grain some, some point down the road, right? I'd like to try ground cherries again. Maybe I should try ground cherries again. Oh, maybe I'm considering that because that is one that it is quite tasty, but you need a raised bed, which I now have. So that would be something I could consider. Um, you know, it's kind of like what can you get at the store versus what you have to grow yourself. You can't really get ground cherries at high quality at the store. I think they do sell them at Whole Foods. Um, kale's cool for like kale chips, and I know a lot of you guys do like juicing and smoothies. And I do have a juicer now, and I would like to grow certain things to juice. Maybe, maybe I should think about that. Just kind of plant different things like kale, and just have myself kale juice. What else could I juice, guys? Could juice carrots. Could grow a lot of carrots somewhere and juice them all. Yeah, that's a good. It's a good thought here. Maybe I should write all this stuff down. I feel like I'm getting get a lot of thoughts, and uh, I don't really. I'm gonna have to go back and watch this video over to kind of get it all again. Let's see here. So we got things for juicing. You guys thought this was all for you. But, you know, this is it's partly for me, too. You know, this is how, this is how I, I come up with my best thoughts, I think. Just doing videos for you guys, just really talking about it, um, you know, definitely really helps. So juicing and ground cherries. And we did mention a couple things like the oh, the potatoes, maybe less broccoli um, happy rich I really like that happy rich it's a seed by the way it's a variety you can get from Johnny's for those of you who can't find it don't know what I'm talking about it's a variety of like broccoli rob rapini from uh, from Johnny's it's a hybrid I believe um Let's see, maybe mm, I guess I can sit I could consider amaranth if really it's I feel like amaranth's a great plan as a lure for these beetles. You know? Um keep them away from whatever it is that beetles like. So I could plant them away from my melons and just have have them go at these this amaranth, I guess. Or in the end, it could just attract the beetle. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, I would like to grow leeks in the future as well. 
because I just really never I never really had time but there's so many good alliums out there like onions and garlic shallots even you know green onions like I have them all in in pretty good amounts and onions are so cheap I didn't find the best results from growing my own melons in terms of or my own onions in terms of the flavor compared to what you get at the store I don't know I wasn't that impressed by the flavor of these things and I am definitely impressed by the garlic um, I just don't know what else did we mention here that I probably should write down? Maybe less eggplant or pep or more peppers. Could use salsa. <clears throat> Pretty soon, what I'm going to do is have an episode with my buddy Dom, and we're going to go over what he's growing. We are going to then map his out talk about why he should grow what he's growing what his his plans are what he's going to do with it all in the kitchen you know because you could process all this stuff if you got all the time and you you really have that desire so um for me not not so much as much as uh as i would like we also have the kyoto red carrot I think juicing is a really incredible thought that I had. I think that was the best thought I had of this whole video. So I could just kind of plant vegetables, really not in beds, just kind of just put them kind of anywhere I can. And they'll grow. I mean, they're not going to grow the best. If I don't really give them the best soil, they're not going to grow the greatest. But I'm going to get something. It doesn't have to have the right, the best conditions either. And then I can harvest from those plants and I can juice them. In fact, I have a th few things I probably could juice right now. I could go out there and get some Swiss chard. That's the other reason why I'm not growing Swiss chard. I have Swiss chard forever, probably. Swiss chard's like perennial here. I don't need to plant Swiss chard. In fact, arugula should be perennial here too, but I can't really... I usually prevent it from going to seed. Um, yeah, and then, and then again, I'm just not really seeing the whole appeal of leeks compared to other alliums. You know, I'm not really seeing it personally. Um, I know they're good. I know they're used a lot in cooking, but... Eh... You know, right? I don't know. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet, guys. Um, okra. I don't really cook with okra, guys. I've eaten it fresh, and it's not bad. It's not as slimy as some people think it is. Um, I'm just not a big fan of it. Melons. You guys know how I feel about the melons. Um, let's see. What else we got here? I'd like to try parsnips one day. There's a different, a lot of different types of beans. There's a lot of different types of peas too, and I'd be interested to try out some more of those. Um, what else we got here? Salad blends. Nah. I think the salad blends kind of perform pretty weak. Most salad blends that you can find from like seed companies. I did have one that performed pretty well, but uh, some of the lettuces that you that they have in the set in the salad blends just really are not good. They're really uh, I don't get it. They just if you really want a salad blend, I think you should make your own. Get a bunch of seed varieties, put them all together, and just that's your blend. You know, plant and just scatter all that around wherever you want. Um, 
spinach is great for cooking and it's so affordable to just buy a bag of spinach that I'm not really seeing the appeal to be honest with you um, I love to saute it with with olive oil and garlic and some salt and it comes out great um, what else we got here da, 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 da. tomatillo I guess you know if I wanted to do a salsa what would I do tomatoes peppers and tomatillos you know what would be the best recipe for a salsa salsa recipe mm. maybe bon appetit has a has a recipe we spelled that horribly just so you know i wish i had the new york times cooking app that's a really impressive cooking app guys for recipes they've got incredible recipes in that thing all right let's see if we can find something here quickly otherwise our internet might be just going kaput here on me um hmm what do you guys want to grow let me know down in the comments all right let me know what you guys are doing. Um, I'm interested. You guys always give me some nice ideas. This is never really final. Uh, you know, it's nice to hear everybody's thoughts and hear what everybody has to say on this whole thing. What is this? Salsa matcha. Oh, no, that's not matcha, like the tea. Hmm. Salsa verde. Um, salsa roja. The only salsa you need. Hmm. Let's see if we can get anything decent here. What are they throwing in this salsa here? Why does it not say? I have to view the recipe. Interesting. This actually sounds really good. So this is basically, well, this is this has got the salmon included in it. So what do I know? But this looks really good. Wow, I want to eat this. It's basically a shallot, lots of olive oil. You get some lemon zest, some orange zest. Got some olive oil. I think I mentioned that. The salmon, the salt, the cilantro, the parsley, the garlic, the paprika. I think that really is smart, the paprika. And again, orange and lemon juice. I think it, come, it would probably come out really, really good. With all that acidity, and that would really make the, the salmon taste incredible. Basically, all that's just wonderful for salmon for pairing with salmon you could probably even put on if you were you know I think you should probably put on uh, like make it even better it would maybe even be like coarse sea salt I love putting coarse sea salt on my fish especially for sashimi oh man oh man that's all right, here we go. This is another. This is a chili laced peanut butter. You'll want to put on everything from tacos to fried eggs. What? There's peanut butter in this. 
Holy moly. All right, we got grapeseed oil, garlic cloves, peanuts, chilies, salt, Okay, so this is basically just oil, garlic, and peppers. That's it? Why are there no tomatoes in this? The only salsa you need. Okay, this seems more like a legit, here we go. Two pounds of tomatoes, one medium onion, Serrano peppers, garlic cloves, salt, lime juice, cilantro. That seems pretty easy to me. Seems pretty easy to me. And you know what? I think it's probably better to... I would probably prefer... I mean, you can make. I could make myself a salsa one, one time. See how it comes out. See how good it is. I'm going to have plenty of tomatoes. I just need to cover the peppers here. Get myself a bunch of peppers. But I have to sacrifice something else. You know, I could probably not grow eggplant. And I could also, instead of growing like Jimmy Nardello pepper, which by the way is a stupidly productive sweet pepper, in a in a very crappy climate they do super super well i could grow instead uh, another productive but but a pepper that has some heat to it um but you know what i don't need any heat in my salsa because i can always add a hot sauce i can always make the heat have i can always give it heat so maybe i should just grow you know more jimmy nardello make myself a salsa if i like the salsa continue making the salsa throughout the year and then at the end of the year i'll have a lot of uh, peppers left over um and i could make my and i could preserve whatever's left over and have myself a couple jars of preserved peppers you know if i probably grow about four to six pepper plants i'm gonna be I'm gonna have more peppers than I'm gonna know what to do with, so um, I think we could do that. I think I'd rather do that. This seems like a legit recipe here, guys. Or a legit idea, I should say. And then maybe I can throw in the ground chelly, cherry here. The question is, which ground cherry tastes the best? Aunt Molly's is supposed to have a really good flavor to it. This is the common type used by the pilgrims. What? This one's new and it could be quite good. Aunt Molly's the classic. Unusual fine flavor. This is probably the best bet. Uh, let's see if these other two match up. The ground cherry, the strawberry husk tomato, sweet tart berries, common type used by pilgrims, excellent for pies. Uh, tasty, prolific berries, amazing. Uh, plants are amazing. No idea how large they get. Easy to grow. Wow. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Da -da 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 you know. Nah, that was a good thought, but nah. Yeah, I'm going to say the Aunt Molly's is still better reading this. So the new Hanover ground cherry is a exclusive ground cherry. F 
flavor is more blah, blah, blah. tastes like a vegetable than a fruit but not the new Hanover it's sweet it's f sweet <laughs> it's sweet it's sweet fruity and addictive it can be hard to save seeds from these because you want to eat every fruit preserved by the late Katie Hoffman Sloaniker in New Hanover Pennsylvania interesting that's sort of close to me I guess we think it tastes better than the common variety known as Aunt Molly's. All right, well, there you go. Uh, at a tasting held by the American Institute of Wine and Food, it beat all other ground cherries tested. Well, there you go, guys. There it is. We got our answer. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take out these eggplants, you can get eggplants, guys, cheap, right? I'm pretty confident we can get them. <laughs> we can find them somewhere. And uh, I think we'll be okay. And I think I'm going to grow about six Jimmy Nardellos. Maybe four. Mm, this is tough, guys. And then we're going to do the ground cherry. Oh, should I? Should I grow more than one ground cherry? Uh, see, I've grown ground cherries before, and I didn't really like them that much. But I think it had a lot to do with the variety. You also have to eat them at the perfect state if you eat them before that they're kind of just meh um they really need to ripen they need to turn orange so uh, i think we could give it a shot we could probably fit two in here somewhere but i like where this is heading i like this all this all these thoughts i think you guys should do the same thing Sit down, spend some time, get yourself a plan, commit to it, and uh, I think you guys will be a lot happier. So we'll see you guys soon, and uh, we'll see you for next episode of Fruit Talk. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this one, you got some insight, maybe it saved you a couple bucks. Think about supporting us on Patreon. No pressure. We'll talk to you guys next week. Um, see you then. Take care, everyone.